This episode of Balancing the Bars is brought to you by Regal Designs Enterprise, your home for embroidery and screen printing services. A global pandemic, the novel coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, which broke out in the province of Wuhan, China. The SARS crisis in Nigeria. A global movement, Black Lives Matter, which continues to advocate against the injustice meted out against people of color. The Me Too movement, the gruesome yet unsolved murder of three teenage boys. Let's remember their names, Joel Henry, Isaiah Henry, and Harish Singh. And let's not forget our own personal pandemics. In this episode of Balancing the Bars, we speak on burnout activism, how to pick your struggles. Because are you tired? I know I certainly am. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Balancing the Bars. I am your co-host, Jamisi McCallman. I'm Ariane Dahlia Richmond. And we have someone whom, in the last episode I told you guys, he's one of my hype men. <laughs> you know, so it serves me an honor and a privilege to introduce him today and to hype him up. You know, he's an advocate for sexual and reproductive health, gender-based violence, um, Black Lives Matter movement, you name it, his voice is there. He has served on and continue to serve on various boards across the world, I yes. can say. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's international. He, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Anthony Glasgow. Woot woot! <laughs> I wanted to say thank you guys for having me. Y'all know I've been one of your biggest fans from the inception. Yes. And it's really just an honor to be here with you guys. Because you know I look up to you guys. And Abina. I love it's, you guys so it's, much. It's, yes. The energy is mutual on a serious <laughs> note. We're happy yeah. to have you because yeah. we know that you're going to be dropping bombs and more just opening up your mind and your experiences to teach people watching right now. My throw in two alkaline lyrics. <laughs> Uh, I mean, <laughs> come on, we love Alkaline. You know this. You know, once it's PG-13, you go, boy. Crap, I need a new artist. Oh. <laughs> but, Dennis, thank you so much for being here. Dennis is filling in today for our girl, Abina Gomes, who could not have been here today. But we know that regardless, it will be another powerful, influential, and mm -hmm. impacting episode. And I believe that he is capable of contributing you know, powerfully to this panel and to this More discussion today. <laughs> yes. So again, Dennis, thank you. As you said, we're talking about burnout activism. Mm -hmm. um, it's big, it's huge. Heavy. And I Heavy believe that indeed. it is a conversation that is not usually, we don't usually have it. And on October 10, we would have observed World Mental Health Day. Mm -hmm. So I believe that it is quite fitting, a quite fitting conversation to be had. So. Yeah. Allow me to ask, Dennis, how would you describe burnout activism and tell us whether you would have, you know, experienced that? I'll, I'll preface my, my personal, my, that's redundant, my <laughs> definition <laughs> of, all good. <laughs> of, um, of burnout activism, but I wanted to preface it with your introduction. Um, you mentioned some really heavy things there, um, a lot of things happening around the world, a lot of things happening right at home. And for me, burnout activism is when some of us feel like we need to take that burden of, you know, accepting every single thing, mm -hmm. you know. I, I need to fight this battle. I need to fight that battle. I feel like everything I need to jump on. And now. And, and now, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're at that point where you're not overwhelmed. So for me, yeah. burnout activism is being overwhelmed with not just emotions, but feelings of other people around you, their hurt, their pain, and, and you're taking that on. And you're just one person. A lot of times we think activists and people involved in speaking out, you know, we think they're supermen and superwomen because they're so oh. powerful when they deliver. Like when, when Jem yes. delivered her introduction, just now but you know gem is human too and you know activists are humans too so um i think 
as you said, this is a conversation that's meaningful to have, but it's one that's also very important that we have among ourselves. Yeah. Um, um, even outside of balancing the bar, you know, what's happening in all of our personal lives. Yeah. I know, you know, there's a lot that Ariane talks about, um, a lot of work Ariane does in particular with girls and across the country with girls. Gem, you do your thing. So I know for you guys, it's been heavy too, but as you said, for me, it's been a, it's been a moment when I, I've reached that burnout a few times, um, especially in the last few months that I've had to, you know, take a step back, you know, check withdraw, in. withdraw yeah. myself from, you know, the world for a bit, you know, balance myself and then catch back the bar. So mm -hmm. I yes! yes. <laughs> 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 corny dad joke. No, I like it. I, I'm, uh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a corny joke person. <laughs> what about you, Dahlia? Um, what would have Ooh. been your experience, you know? Uh, that one catch my heart. By now, you know, we love being candid on mm -hmm. this panel, mm -hmm. um, on this show, so, you know, yeah, well, as candid as you please, I feel as though I my burnout came with a mental breakdown. I think that, uh, that we can relate on these. These mm -hmm. burnouts aren't, oh, well, maybe I'm just too tired today. I'm not going to address this today. This burnout is personal. It, it shifts your life if you allow it in a positive direction, despite it being something negative. Mm -hmm. And it's really just something that you kind of see coming. You know that you should take this day off. You know you should probably catch an extra hour, but you're like, no, I got I to do this. I got to do that. And... For the past five years, while I've been traveling the country, teaching structural reproductive health, uh, public speaking, arts and craft, because I think that as well as giving information, you also have to make children comfortable and art does that. Mm -hmm. It also helps them to rebuild self-esteem um, in lots of spaces where, where they lose it. You know, at times we lose self-esteem in the home, we lose self-esteem within ourselves and how we talk to ourselves. Um, while I was doing all that for everybody else, I wasn't doing it for myself. Yeah. So I hit ground zero and being candid, it was at the time where I faced sexual assault and it, it, it changed my entire life, mm -hmm. yeah? And I feel as though when I said me too and this is what it is, I felt the full backlash of it because we have, uh, a victim blaming society that's the fact of it mm -hmm. and i was put on that cross and people try to light the fire listen mm -hmm. i was like nope not me and mm -hmm. like i was like listen this is not what we're doing it's a 21st century two out of every three young women and men in the caribbean face sexual assault face um discrimination and some level of abuse i don't think that we should be blaming victims anymore and at that point i hit my burnout and i was like hey i really need to take a step back and realize that i can only help someone else if i'm pouring into myself yeah. mm -hmm. if i'm addressing my own trauma and from that i have the zest to go out and help someone else because i can look at them and say hey you yeah, you watching this, I know exactly what you're going through. And even though we didn't go through the same thing, I know the pain that you're feeling. And this is how I help myself. This is the therapist I went to. This is the road that I took. And okay, maybe you can modify it and, you mm -hmm. know, put maybe it to you. Own. But unless I do that, I can't really help anybody else. Yeah. I'm just going to be like another one of these hurt people bleeding on other people. And I've been there before. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. No, but you said something very important <laughs> that um, before Jem jumps in, I, that, that I wanted to reiterate, because this is something I said to my friend yesterday. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to allow ourselves to break down because the only thing mm. we can do after is build up, yeah. right? I mean, a lot that of, yes, so yes, you know sometimes this is the end, like it, in, in your head it's the end, but a lot of the times, especially when you fall, there's only one thing else you can do. You get need up. to get up. So get for me, up. I needed to let myself break down to that point where I felt nothing. I felt as if I myself was nothing to mm -hmm. really understand the impact that I could have had, um, that I was having, on if, even if it was just one person. Yeah. So the, the breakdown um, is all a part of our journeys. Yeah. Um, there is no one person on earth can s that can say I've been this way forever. So mm -hmm. the breakdown is a part sure. of the journey. Just, you know. Get up, dust yourself up. It may take a year, it may take, take a month. Take your own time too. Yeah, yeah it yeah. may take a week, you know. It, it's, it all depends on you. But the fact is, get up and go again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love, I, I'll pig piggyback on what both of you said. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to feeling, you know, like I need a breakdown. I remember last year when I was finishing up my diploma, um, I was so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to study for my business management exam as well as my communication exam. And nothing was sticking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were <know>? like, <laughs> and okay. I remember <laughs> one of my mentors, she wanted to have a chat with me, you know, to check in. And I was so 
overwhelmed. I was like, Auntie T, are you ready for us to have that conversation? I need a breakdown. Mm -hmm. I need to have a breakdown Open because I be know real. that from then I will, I will bounce mm -hmm. back. But to piggyback on what Dalia would have said in terms of not bleeding on other people, mm -hmm. I feel like that is so important because one thing that I've learned over the years is that trauma not transformed is trauma transferred. Mm. You know? That wow. part. I, I, that was deep, <laughs> yo. That, I, that I part. That. <laughs> I, I learned that and it's like so sometimes true. we're trying yo. to lead while bleed, mm. while we're bleeding. Mm. And it ends up, you know, we project oh, that oh, oh. onto other people. But if I am to, so this episode is so personal to me because mm -hmm. if over the last few months, and I shared a post recently on my Facebook page that all we've been doing since 2020 is mourning. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, all yeah. we've been doing is mourning. But I want to say that sitting here with you guys and you guys listening to my voice, it's a blessing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I was on the edge. I was on the edge. You know, it's like, let's go back to, as I said in the intro, we talk about the murder of Joel Henry, mm -hmm. Isaiah Henry, and Harris Singh. And that hit me so hard. Mm -hmm. so hard because my brother's name is Isaiah and one of my best friends their name is Joel Henry all right and so when I first heard the news uh, I was seeing the hashtags mm -hmm. and they live he, he lives in the US so it's like okay we know the US is no better than Guyana mm -hmm. you know <laughs> so I was like what happened it's a right what happened and I I felt numb for a second and then it was like okay he's good but then when I saw the details of the murder of what happened to those boys, it's like, it could have been my brother. Mm -hmm. It could have been my friend. Mm -hmm. And I remember going out there at the Square of the Revolution and advocating. I was like, COVID or not, I need to be there. I need to sound my voice. And I was talking to a friend and I felt so overwhelmed. I'm like, hey, I had this rope in my room, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, she came over and I was like, I feel like I'm going to use that mm -hmm. rope. Mm -hmm. That's how overwhelmed I was feeling. And then, ish, hit the fan. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, we're dealing with our personal pandemics mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? All while everything is still happening while at the same time. While everything is happening. And it got so severe, I sent her, I said, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And I started sending her instructions on what to do after I take my deep. departure. Yeah. It really and does. She was like, what the hell are you talking about? And if it were not for her dropping everything that whatever she was doing and calling my friends to who lives close by to come across, I'm saying it again. I don't know if I would have been here because mm. that's how close to the edge I was. And <sighs> I know it's a lot. You know? it's a it, lot. it gets overwhelming. And so when you see people on social media asking, um, why is it so silent? Why aren't you guys advocating anymore? Mm -hmm. What happened? People get tired. Yeah. People, the burnout. The burnout is real. Get Yo, but tired. I want. I wanted to thank you for sharing, not just with me, but those for, for persons listening into, mm -hmm. because you know, a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge that we've been we've been that person yeah. yeah and and a lot of times you know we talk about the importance of mental health as, as as young people who interact with young people and vulnerable people and a lot of the times we haven't really dealt with that with or done own. that introspection yeah. and, and really acknowledge that hey i've been here before because for a very long sure. time i could not have done what you just did there and acknowledge that i am that person or yeah. i got to that point um so i really wanted to acknowledge you know how strong and important that message was and, and, and being that vulnerable with us um, and sharing with us that on Arian and I in, in studios here today. But I also wanted to say that a lot of the times, you know, we, when, when you mentioned, you know, the whole burnout and, and you know, the withdrawal that yeah. happened, like in the middle of it, when everything happened, we talked about it as well, you know, before, you know, I was so hyped on social media mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, there is no Anthony, like yeah. the profile gone, all the posts gone. And it got overwhelmed because, you know, I know I usually post nonsense on my post, my social media mm -hmm. page, but you know, posts are now getting you know hundreds of reshares and yeah. hundreds of interact. I'm like, no, no, this is not what I want. This yeah. is not. This is not. This is too much for me. So like, I'm like, yo, let me withdraw myself from all of this because I know at the end of the day, you know, it's not going to be good for me if I allow myself to every single comment in? to get to get to yeah. me and every single input to get to me. Because I was like, nah, I I kind of need to pull away because that would have probably. 
I would have probably been in a position with like Jamisio was again and and that's not where I'm trying to be right now I mean mm. it's a lot of us it's a part of our journey mm -hmm. um, but I've, I've been through that and I'm not trying to go, go there back again. there again so yeah protecting my space and protecting mm. my own mental health doesn't Vital. mean that I don't care about what's happening around me or care about impacting the lives of other people because as you said Ariane you know how can I pour from an empty from jug empty you know yes. I need to be able to you know as, as, I, as I always put it I can't afford to be selfless if I haven't been selfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to invest so much in self that self is so strong that other selves can't impact it. And, and that's where I am and at right now. Yeah, and then you're able to, that's, that's the thing, it's stages. Thank you so much for sharing that because a lot of the times we don't realize that life happens in stages. I mean, mm -hmm. look at how a plan grows. I think sometimes we allow society to impact self to a point where we forget that you are unique, your own pattern of thinking, the way that you naturally do things, it's for a reason. Plants don't go about saying, I'm to the, I'm to Belange, I'm Oko, <laughs> how they're going, so I know but this I is a pumpkin. No, they don't do that, yeah. they do them, all right? And yeah. something that we need to realize too is that there's stages to healing mm -hmm. and you can't, you can't fake healing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you do, if you do choose to fake healing, is that you set yourself back even further. And, and that's not what we're about. And talking about uh, different people and the stages they're at, I think in activism, it's so important to realize that your personality has a place mm -hmm. in activism. Yeah. It's not only for extroverts, it's for introverts to a lot of people, especially Guyanese. We see activism as something um, loud and always out there. But the thing is, lots of um, important decisions and life-changing movements happen between two people in a room where no one's around and at the same point it happens too when a horde of people get together and they put pressure on the system that is trying to ignore um, justice and ignore people being treated fairly so I, I definitely think that activism has a purpose in everyone's life what do you guys what do you think it can happen in silence I'll say that Mm. Oh, it doesn't too. always have to be loud. That and too. during the whole um, loudness surrounding the murders of the teenage boys, I said on my social media, you don't have to be out there. You don't have to be out there holding a placard and have a speaker. Your activism can be dance, the arts. Mm -hmm. It can be writing a letter to the editor. Mm -hmm. If you like poetry, do your poetry. Mm -hmm. If you're a, some, an organizer, that can be you, right? So it doesn't always have to be loud. Mm. Mm. Or even right. talking to that family member who is so adamant on hating other people just for the color of, of their, their skin, skin yeah. or thinking that this thing don't have to do with me. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is, is, is sometimes it's a simple no. You know, okay, no, this is not what we're doing again for another generation. We are not preaching hate. Sometimes mm. it happens in your own homes. You're you're being an activist there. Yeah. And I think it's so underrated. I think a lot of times we think that we have to be loud and it's not the case. Yeah. But what I want to ask you guys to like, there's so much happening around this as yeah. we, we can acknowledge. So how do you go about picking your struggles? Mm. How do you, not your struggles, but your battle, mm -hmm. how do you decide, I'm going to add my voice here? Okay, this is what I'm going to do. How? How? Because sometimes you feel as though, or I felt as though I needed to add my voice to, to everything. To everything. Yeah. All right, so... Um, I feel I, feel I learned the, the hard way, way might I just add. <laughs> I, I had to learn the hard way too because I felt the same way at, at some, um, as you mm -hmm. know, we Guyanese would say, you know, everything in cup now. <laughs> yeah. We there. face the showing. Yeah, yeah, we face just there because, you know, you f it's, it's like you feel like everybody, everybody's silent on this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't really 100% passionate about this, but if everybody gonna shut up about it, Why not? at least I can take the mm -hmm. fault and like, you could you could attack me or whatever, mm -hmm. I can say something. So like I, a large part of my, you know, Teen, late teens, um, even in high school, I, I have felt the full blunt of it because I feel like everything I had to jump on. And it mm. was one of my high school teachers um, who always said this thing to me, uh, Dennis, you want to be a jack of all trades and a, a master, master of none. none. And I'm like, at the time, I didn't know what I mean. I'm like, sir, shut up. Like, <laughs> my own business. <laughs> what you talking me. about? <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, as I got older, I, re I realized we really, we really was implying is that I can't be jumping and pouring of myself into everything and everything I'm giving of my uh, my 100% or I'm giving even a part of me to because what I'm doing is I'm giving away myself and I'm giving a little 
bit everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really pushing 110 into oh. anything. So I'm really not getting that widespread impact. So for me, choosing choosing your battles, because I don't like I don't like in this context the word struggle. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why I said battles. Yeah, choosing yeah. a battle mean it is, is really has a lot to do with introspection and understanding that, hey, what am I really passionate about? Yeah. What do I really think um, I can add an, I can have an impact on? What really is this top one or top three things that is happening right now that I think I want to add my voice to, or I think I should add my voice to, or I think my voice has the biggest impact? Let me pause you. I think you should look to the camera and tell, yeah. and, and and tell them, them, and them that. Tell yeah. them what's up. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. Yeah. Don't be like Dennis and just jump at everything. Because when you are not able to educate yourself fully on the topic you're so damn passionate about, you're looking real shaky to people. Mm -hmm. So it's really about not just trying to add to every t all 10 topics, but it's really saying these is the top three that I'm really passionate about. I'm going to educate myself on what's happening, give myself all the definitions I need. I'm going to um, research what's happening in other country in relation to this. I'm going to research what's happening right here so that I am re I've really built my, my arsenal. Yeah. So when I'm ready to a be an activist for this cause, you really can't come at me funny because I know my what you're about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know my... And you can't do that for 10 topics while balancing school as some of us are Your while mind. balancing work <laughs> while balancing family drama while balancing really just existing because 2020 yes. has been so hard for us to exist yeah. and it's not like these these pandemics or or these negative things are are, are saying hey let's talk team I can come in for January. No, it's yes. like all oh, them just rushing at me right yeah. now. No, like, me, no, me, no, me, no, yeah. me. It's like a, it's like the kitty bus park, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody try to reach home at the same time. Yeah. I, I think for me, it really has to do with really honing in on your natural inclination with choosing mm -hmm. which battle that you really want to mm -hmm. fight because you know, really and truly, if you take the time to figure out, okay. Allow my life, what has been pulling at my heartstrings the most, then you know, you know what's up with you. You know what you really want to fight for. And being true to yourself, because a lot of times we aren't, mm -hmm. I think that we focus too on what other people want more than what we're actually good at, more than what you want. So focus on what you want and you'll know. And then too, even after, excuse me, even after you follow your natural inclination, it has a lot to do with being real with yourself mm -hmm. and looking at the facts. Okay, am I really needed in this space? Mm -hmm. What can I give to this space that it doesn't already have? How mm -hmm. can I make a change? Like, be real with yourself so that nobody can obviously be like, hey, you don't know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, am I real. adding value? Yes. Or am I, uh, and I've, ha I've had to come to grips with uh, a lot of the things I was passionate about on like women's rights and on, on women's issues isn't to say that I'm no longer passionate about it. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've learned through other people calling me out that, you know, sometimes you need to decrease so that the women who you're talking about can, can increase. increase. Ah. Yes. Um, and, and, and you said something on inclination and, and being being in tune with self. And, and for me, not to get, you know, too spiritual or whatever, but it's also There's really understanding understanding purpose yeah. and, 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 and what and what the universe or God or whatever it is to you, whatever that thing above is to you and understanding what that purpose is, you know, is, is predestined for you. Mm -hmm. Because you, a, a lot of times we think, you know, <coughs> God or, or God put me on this earth because he wants me to, to be a doctor and I'm pursuing medicine all these years. Then I realized that, you know, that's not what really it, was it mom. God or was, or was it, it your mom saying, saying like, saying, "Hello, you I would make a nice good, doctor"? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so it's, it's I, I think we got we, we got to apply that to our per, our personal yeah. battles too. You know, it's like, is God really sending me in this direction? Is He really pulling me this way, or is the world pulling me here? And and mm. a lot and one of the things that I I had to reason with um, a friend of mine Saturday night, like a random Instagram live that popped up, and I just went on it. Is like we need to understand as well that. The world will continue to, to happen around us. Mm -hmm. Things will continue to evolve. Things mm -hmm. will continue to change. The only constant is self, yeah. right? And self isn't going to be here forever. So what are you going to do to impact in that time that you have? That you have. Because we don't know if tomorrow something could happen to any one of us. Because mm -hmm. we know this world. Or all of rolling, us. Or all <laughs> of us. Yeah. You, you know. never know. So how do, who do, how do I use this time that I have meaningfully? And that doesn't mean that, I, as, as we said before, we're going to be jumping all over into everything. Mm -hmm. you know. But really trying to make that, why, that big impact. That mm -hmm. one thing that you think is your purpose or your reason for being here. I love that, and you talk about purpose, and every time I hear that, I always remember Dr. Miles Monroe, 
where um, the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Mm. You know, so it's like mm, that's deep. you're you're just a part of something. You don't even know the purpose of it, mm. right? And even sometimes that thing defines you, mm -hmm. right? You allow that thing to define you, like you you're not defined by it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I. I love what you said about that, knowing the purpose of something, why you're in it. But aside from that, I also believe that one of the ways in which we can learn how to pick our struggles and avoid burnout activism is having um, the sustainability of this this movement, mm -hmm. having sustainable plans in place. Oh, because yeah. sometimes we just, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, justice, justice, justice. Listen, no how can we ensure? Your life. Ex no movement is because worth then your you life. you you put shame to it yeah. Yeah. yeah think think about think about like really think about it what are you willing to 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 lose your life over that wouldn't continue to be an issue when you when, when you're, you're gone. no longer here hmm. so for me that sustainability is ensuring there are other people to keep that to keep voice, the movement yeah. going to keep that movement yeah. going because there were people who came before us that were talking about racial injustices yeah. and there are people who are going to come after us um because i'm i'm not of the view that oh tomorrow morning we could wake up on racism gone and you know black because it's in the matter. minds of people. Yeah, it, it, it's something. It's something. Yes, it's gonna get better. My my my, you know, cautiously optimistic view is that it will get better. But I'm, <coughs> I'm, I'm, my point is, nothing is gonna leave this earth when we do. Mm -hmm. We came here already knowing what existed. Um, we had to fit in, and that's what's going to happen after. So no movement is worth me giving all of my mental health into it, giving my entire body into it. I'm missing lunch, I'm missing dinner <laughs> over anything, because when my maga bamzi, <laughs> right, fall really, down and dead, really? because me eating. <laughs> no, but it's important. Yeah, it's so important. Nobody not going to be like, oh, let me make you hashtag. Me want me no hashtag. Yeah, right? true, but true. Our monument. Is, true. It's not worth it. So protect self care for self and that's the only way self can give good to a movement on that note though i think a lot of times we don't focus on how we really and truly care for ourselves so while i rattle on you guys can think about what is something that you would tell an activist whether seasoned or fresh in the game um i think for me it has a lot to do not only with physical care but with really and truly mental care how do you mm -hmm. talk to yourself are you would you take every word that you have in your head and would you give it to someone that that you, not pity, but you feel sorry for? Because I think it's, it's a difference. You know, sometimes you can feel sorry for them, but it's not full-blown pity. Mm -hmm. Or someone who actually needs the extra care and attention. The same way you're talking to yourself, would you talk to that person? A lot of times, too, we're focusing on how we treat other people and we're not focusing on how we treat ourselves. Mm -hmm. For me, my message to other activists is to really understand that, you know, you said it earlier, you know, there's a space for everybody. <coughs> Whatever your, your, your means of talking or speaking out, there's a space for you. And we need to stop this whole, you know, fighting among ourselves business yeah. that we tend to get in, into. Stop it. You know, I can <laughs> at Ariane because Ariane do this 10 years ago. Oh my God, the call out culture. Are and, and that, perfect. Yeah, the but call out culture. We need to really understand Ooh. that we're defeating the movements we're so passionate about if we bickering among ourselves oh because I'm gosh. just going to look at this like yo this is one shaky group and or this oh, is just yeah. one shaky oh but hold on message. Dennis Dennis you in my business <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but, but, but that is that is so important because something that I find and as we said activism is not just in the, in the social sphere where we find it fighting for these injustices and so on but it's in our families mm -hmm. in our workplaces um, in our churches in our youth groups and I believe that collaboration even in activism is important yep, mm -hmm. yep. collaboration in activism is important and sometimes we find that I want to be the one leading mm -hmm. I want to say that I did this no you don't you don't Check it doesn't yourself. have to be that way but in closing 10 seconds or more <laughs> or less <laughs> final words to our viewers out and listeners out there, I definitely want to implore you to check yourself. It boils down to you. Whatever you're doing, make sure it's from your heart because that's the only way it'll matter. And we thank you so much for choosing Balancing the Bar because you know this is a good vibe. And comment, tell us what do you want to hear next? What are some questions that you want to answer to? Because we appreciate you, all right? Thank you so much for choosing Dennis. Balancing the Bar. Dennis, Dennis, is there something you want to say? Uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, 
just be just be one with self and invest in protecting your own space your own mental health and a lot of us we've grown over the years so we need to un understand that people around us need to come and grow with us yeah. and accept the, the growth in mm -hmm. us so Ariane five ten years ago Jamisia five ten years ago Dennis five ten years ago may not be the same person now so allow us to grow mm -hmm. um, and, and be one with who we currently present ourselves to be Awesome. I want to say this, that you guys saw me, you know, clothing and it's time to breed apparel. And I feel like oftentimes we are suffocated by so mm -hmm. many things around us. And we see our brothers being suffocated by these things in our homes, in our, in our schools, wherever. I want to tell you guys that it's time to breathe. Be your brothers and your sisters keeper. And if you can help them fight that battle, help them fight that battle. Earlier, Dennis said that, you know, sometimes it breaks down is necessary but i want to say that it doesn't always have to be a breakdown it can be a breakthrough mm -hmm. and a breakthrough can happen also if we be our brothers and our sisters keeper and help them carry some of those weight and some of those encumbrance that so easily beset them so thank you guys so much for watching another episode of balancing the bars i trust that this was impacting and life-changing transforming to your lives i am your host jimmy McCalman. I'm Ariane Dahlia Richmond. And thank you, Dennis Glasgow, for Thanks joining for the panel. <laughs> thank you guys for watching Balancing the Bars, where balance, balance brings, brings peace. peace.